to Saturday. It is slow Saturday, yeah. What is happening in your world? In my world, it is cold. It is quite cold at the moment, but I know that many of you will laugh at my concept of cold, just like I would probably laugh at your concept of warm. Cold for me is when it gets to 10 degrees Celsius. That for me is cold. Um, hot for me, I can easily tolerate up to 35, but when it gets to 40s, I become miserable. And we frequently hit that in the summer months. But now it is uh, autumn here. It's getting into winter. It is, um, I think the reason why I'm so cold this year, I've never been so close to the dam before. I live quite close to a very big dam now and um, it's quite cold here close to the water. Anyway, so when COVID started right in the beginning, I think it was April 2020 when I was working on this, I was very much overcome with worry and stress about this whole COVID thing. And I took out some very special yarn from my stash. It was yarn that I had bought in New Zealand. It was um, blends of alpaca, merino and possum. And I crocheted a massive shawl with it. Um, the bulk of the shawl was just granny rows because that's what I needed at that moment. Uh, I was overwhelmed by this new pandemic that we didn't know what was coming. And the, I find granny rose to be really very meditative, very relaxing, very therapeutic. So I crocheted this massively big shawl in four different colors. And then by the time that I was at the end of the shawl, I actually had it in me to do a very elaborate, beautiful border to the shawl. But the pattern was never really released. I had it on my website for a limited time, but it wasn't tested and it did have mistakes in. Okay, so um, when we were down in the cap a couple of weeks back, I visited Bren from Jan and I bought six hanks from her. I still showed you the hanks. Two of them were a stone color, two of them uh, very dark charcoal and two uh, a mustard yellow. And I wanted to crochet the same type of shawl. Reason being, when I was studying um, BCom Business Informatics, I had a study friend that I had never met at that stage. We were just online students that shared resources and study notes and whatever have you. Uh, what set us apart is we were much older than the rest of the group. Uh, it was long distance training, but still we, we had um, virtual rooms where we could interact with other students and we were much older than the bulk of them. We were both in our 40s already. And um, Asalai, um, she came from Malawi originally, but she was in South Africa at that stage. And eventually we became more than just students sharing resources. We became friends, although we had never met. And then she said to me that she's returning to Malawi, her home country. And I said to her, we've got to meet before you go. So the day before she flew out, I drove halfway and she drove halfway and we met in the middle somewhere and we had breakfast together. But the people in the restaurant must have thought that we were loony because we were laughing so much and so loud. We had such a great time. But that morning I wore that shawl. That one that I made at the start of lockdown. Let me just tell my phone to shush because that's going to make a noise just now. And um, Asalai, or Sally as I called her, um, she was raving about the beauty of the shawl. And she was such a special person to me. Well, she still is such a special person to me that that morning I just took the shawl off my shoulders and I, I wrapped her in the shawl. And I said to her, okay, take a piece of my heart with you. So that shawl is in Malawi somewhere. So I was looking for a replacement. 
the 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 thing is um, a lot of designers when they start out they start out designing shawls because it's an easy thing to design and a lot of people when they start crocheting or knitting they start out crocheting and knitting shawls because it's a it's a it's a rewarding project it's not that big it doesn't overwhelm the newbies and pretty soon they've got something that they can wear so it's a very rewarding feeling it's a very accomplished feeling when you've finished something that you can finally wear but for me as a person i'm not that much into shawls wearing them and it's it has to be a very very big shawl that i like I like it when I can really wrap myself in this thing and where it hangs way past my bottom. It must really warm up my back, my bottom, my hips and everything else. I want to wrap myself in this thing. That I will wear and that's the one I gave away. And it's not the first one I gave away, I might tell you. I had another one like that. Um, but that was a totally different pattern. But I remember the yarn. The yarn was colored by uh, a lady, M. Tempest. She called her stuff Electric Carnation. And she made the yarn exclusively for Yarn in a Barn. That was my yarn shop at that stage. And it was called Fade to Black. And it was a 100 gram hank that started off electric neon green. And through the whole 100 grams, it eventually faded to black. And I had that in that lime green. I had cerise pink. I had orange. I had yellow. I had turquoise. And I had a purple. It was six colors that she made for the yarn shop. And I remember I took two sets. I took the orange and I took the lime green. And I started the shawl off on the black. And it Fade. No, I started it off at the lime green and it faded into the black and then the next ball I started from the black side and it faded out to orange. That thing was beyond beautiful and I remember I was in George down in the Cape and I was doing a wacky weave workshop and the one lady was hassling me for that shawl. She wanted to buy it. And eventually I just gave it to her. I can't even remember her name. I don't know who she is. But somewhere there, there's somebody wearing an electric green and orange and black shawl. Now, I, don't, I didn't have another one that big. And it's winter. And I like that when it's that big. So, when I was at Bren, I bought the six skeins uh, to make myself another shawl like that. So, this is the start of it. I've got... 55 rows already in here. I've got 15 more granny rows to go. And then I'm going to do a solid, a little bit of, maybe I'll do 10 more granny rows and 5 solid rows. And then I'm going to redo that very elaborate border. And the border is going to be in the mustard. But I ran out of yarn. I kid you not. I need more of the stone color. And I need more of the very dark charcoaly black color. I have enough of the yellow. But I need more stone and more black. And the yarn shop hasn't got it. So she's frantically trying to organize me more yarn. So that I can finish this beauty because I really want to release this pattern it is um, it's a very nice thing to make as a gift to somebody because as you I mean granny rose is just so relaxing to me I love it and you can really let your mind go and think good thoughts towards the person that you're crocheting for or you can meditate or you can pray or whatever this is a really, really relaxing therapeutic project to do when you're overwhelmed or when you're in company and you really want to keep your hands busy but you don't want to count and you don't want to concentrate. Ideal. It's only the border that's going to be very attention needy because it's going to be quite elaborate. So, okay, that's what. Then, 
On Wednesday, Alta and I went to the Colorspun studio in Heidelberg. Heidelberg is not far from Johannesburg. It's actually quite close. From me, it's about an hour and a half drive, um, but I live quite on the western side of Pretoria, so I have to go through Pretoria, through Joburg, to Heidelberg. But it's so worth it. Oh, my word. Donna's studio is just... It's overwhelming. She's got many different weights of cotton, many different weights of merino, um, blends, art yarns, um, embroidery floss, cotton fabric for quilting, and they've all they hand dyed. Oh man, I actually went there with the intention of buying yarn for one project that I want to do. It was one of the things that I did for book two that I used as a design your own, but I want to rework the pattern and improve it slightly and then publish it on Ravelry. So I was looking for more or less 500 grams of yarn, but I decided to take six just in case. And that is what I went there for. One project worth of yarn. <laughs> I left there yarn for a beanie for my son-in-law they live in Sweden yarn for a beanie for my daughter that lives in Sweden yarn for my Sweden granddaughter that lives in Sweden I want to make her um, a little sweater and a matching cap uh, yarn for um, a knitted top that I want to wear over um, leggings so it's a nice long one yarn to make a crochet version of that so I want to knit one and I want a crochet one yarn for the one that I went there for I've got that there should be two more what was the other two But I left there with yarn for eight projects. And I still have yarn for a knitted jersey that's there, of which the concept is in my head, not finalized yet. I'm missing a few things still, but I'm working on it. And the Moya is on the way for the lock cabin cowl that I'm going to do. So. got 10 or 11 projects lined up I think I have a serious lack of self-control when I'm in a yarn shop <laughs> anyway so the crochet top that I want to make it's an open it's an open little cardigan it's like a cardigan um, with buttons up here the rest is hanging open and it has three quarter sleeves and I decided to make it in an ombre. So I've got these, they follow each other. It starts up with the dark one working up and then you work this one up and that's where you are. So I've got 600 gram for that little jacket and I'm going to start it right now because I can't continue with the shawl. I don't have enough yarn. I don't have enough yarn. Anyway. While I was in the shop a while ago, about a year ago already I was knitting and I was alternating two skeins of yarn because most of the times I work with hand dyed yarns it just appeals to me I absolutely love the concept of supporting an indie dyer buying her hand dyed yarns and the love that has gone into this thinking that somebody somewhere there's a woman that has really loved this yarn giving it the color i like that but let's face it if yarn is dyed with human hands you can't expect to have a whole 900 gram of yarn and it's absolutely the same throughout that's that's unrealistic it doesn't work like that people are not machines um 
And there are so many things that play a part in the indie dyeing business. The climate of the day, the water temperature of the day, the water content of the day, the, the, the composition in the water, it changes and it's things that the indie dyers cannot control. So you must really have a love for hand dye yarn like I do and then use it like I do. That works. I always alternate two skeins of hand dye yarn because then you don't get that line where you end one ball, you start the next ball and you can clearly see there she ended the one and there she started the next one. I don't like that unless that's what I'm going for. If, I, if that's not what I'm going for, then I alternate skeins, especially when I knit, because knitting lends itself to alternating skeins so much easier than crochet. But alternating skeins, as the knitters will tell you, especially when you're working in the round, can be quite difficult to get a neat alteration, alter, I'll alter, <laughs> that. And by accident, this happened. I found this and I thought, what did I just do? This, this, <laughs> something happened and I thought, oh my word, this makes sense. Let me try this some more. So I went, to the, well, I didn't go there to buy it. I just bought it when I was there. Huh? Because this is my problem. When I'm in a yarn shop, variegated yarns call me. I don't like to crochet with a variegated yarn. I love to knit with a variegated yarn. In my opinion, variegated yarn should be knitted and not crocheted. Crochet just messes it all up, but knitting brings it out to its full beauty. Now, often when I go into a yarn shop, I will buy one skein because that's beautiful to me. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I just buy the one skein and then I put it away. And I thought I should actually design smaller projects. I told you that a week or two ago. Smaller projects to use one or two hanks. But now oftentimes I don't have two hanks that look the same because I always buy the single ones because they're pretty. Okay. So I went to Donna and I bought these two hanks of yarn. You can see they are vastly different. This one is like really autumny colors. It's it's mustards and oranges and reds and greens and browns. And this one is orangey, but it's got uh, turquoise in, it's got purple in, and a little bit of gray. They are quite different. Now, I, normal people will look at this and think, you can't put that together. I mean, Alta looked at me and she said, you want to do what? I said, I'm going to use them together. And she, you could see on her face, she was thinking, I've lost my marbles. Which I have, but never mind. Okay, so this is where I am with this. This is plain, plain stocking stitch. Because I want to make the color shine. And look at that. Now you tell me that's not beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I do. Okay, so this is going to be a cull. And, ooh, I'm throwing off my stitches. Um, I'm not going to charge for the pattern. I mean, really, to, to knit a tube in stocking stitch is really brainless. You really don't need a pattern to do that. But that's all I'm doing. I'm just knitting this tube for a cowl and it's a it's a rather big one and i'm going to use the full 200 grams the full two balls i'm going to go right to the end with the balls because i have a thing about a cowl and blimey in the beginning i designed cows exactly like that too short they like hmm, the width of my neck and what happens they float down and they hang here like a freaking necklace and it doesn't warm me up. It looks like a piece of jewelry that I wanted to wear because I can't afford jewelry. It's not a curl. It doesn't heat me up. I want the fat thing. It must sit on my neck. And if it's really cold, I somehow want to pull it over my head as well. So that's why it's so wide. And that is why I'm going to use all of this to make this long tube. And then put it on. So I will do a tutorial video on this technique and put it on uh, Patreon. But I will make it available on my blog as well. Just summer. Because this 
you can see a little bit of where the alteration takes place. But once I've steamed this, you don't see it. It disappears. And it's just as invisible on the wrong side as it is on the right side. I kid you not. I think it's genius. Okay, so the last thing. While I was there by Dana, you know, if, if I, and I'm trying really hard at the moment to only buy yarn for projects that I've got in my head. So I didn't just buy yarn because I wanted to buy yarn. It's, these are actually projects that I have in my head. So I just got carried away. And I think what happened was it is such a luxury for me to be in a yarn shop where I can feel the yarn and move them around on a table and fiddle with this one and think, no, this is not going to work, and I put it that side, and so that I got carried away and bought for eight patterns. Because most of the times I now have to shop online because there's not a nice yarn shop anymore close to me, and my own one is closed, so, yeah. So while I was there, it was actually a social uh, morning that Donna arranged so there was another woman there as well I don't know her I can't even remember her name I'm very bad with names and faces if I see her today I won't recognize her it takes me a long 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 time to remember a face and I didn't realize that she was looking with interest at what I was doing so this is me and her yarn shop I will take yarn out put it together hmm yeah no no, no, no. Mm. And then I move it. And eventually this woman spoke to me and she said, Would you mind sharing your thoughts? And I'm sorry, what did you say? And she said, I want to know what you think. Could you please verbalize your thoughts as you're doing this yarn search? And I looked at her in horror and I thought, You must be joking. You're going to hear so many swear words. <laughs> To start off with, the language is going to be very colourful. <laughs> and you're probably going to think I'm crazy. If I have to tell you all the thoughts that go through my autistic head, I might get certified, man. <laughs> you see, the thing is, I had a very strict father. And my parents didn't know I was autistic, so forgive them. But... There were certain things about my demeanor that really irritated the shits out of him. The one was my hands. I was always fiddling with my hands and flipping my hands. And I just had to do something with my hands. And that's why my mother taught me to knit and crochet when I was only four. was to keep my hands occupied. And it still works to this day. That's why I crochet and knit when I go to church on the odd occasion. I also spoke very fast. That... Um, I've got under control. I, I don't do that anymore. I do speak a little bit faster when I'm excited, but it's it's not that bad anymore. My father literally disciplined that out of me. And then the other thing is, um, I was talking too much about things that interest me. And I had to learn to shut up. And it was difficult for me as a child because on the one hand, your parents says, tell me what you think of this. And then you say what I think of this. And then they're angry at what you think of this. And I couldn't understand that. As an autistic person, it still doesn't make sense to me. If you ask me for my opinion, why do you get offended at my opinion? It's my opinion. You can have your opinion and we can have different opinions and we can discuss it. But why do you get emotionally upset about it? I don't know. So... I learned to keep quiet. If I go to a social with strange people, I will probably be the little wallpaper sitting in the corner listening to all these people. And But if you could see my thoughts, <laughs> that's going to be a different story. And it got me thinking. She's not the first one to ask me a question in that direction. I've had people... Um, send me messages after slow saturday videos and say to me i want to know more why did you decide on this project or how did you choose that yarn or why did you choose the yarn or 
What is your thought process when you're designing? How do you do this? I've had many of those. Now, my Patreon has been problematic. You know, when I started out with Patreon, now, for those of you that don't know, Patreon is a platform where artists or whatever, oh, come on, for heaven's sake, I don't feel like fighting with you as well. Hey, stop it. Patreon is a platform where artists can share content with their followers. Oh, would you please stop it now? Really, really, really. Uh, where was I? My husband isn't home today. And this freaking black dog is the pits. He is so difficult when his father is not in the house. He drives me insane and he drives the other bitch insane as well. So, ha! Where was I now? Patreon. Patreon is a place where artists can um, get an income through subscriptions. And there are different tiers that the, the content provider or the creator, as they're called, can share stuff. So at that stage, I was looking for a place to share workshops and tutorials where people would have to pay for it. Because physical workshops were just so tiring. I had to leave my house and fly and drive and whatever. And then people were upset because they couldn't get to the workshop. So I wanted to do an online thing. And Patreon provided that platform for me. And at that stage, I had so much to share that it was easy for me to share weekly content. So people pay $2 or $4 a month and they got a weekly tutorial video. And then eventually I ran out of ideas. I've shared everything that I wanted to share. And now I'm like, oh, shit. Now I have to wait for a light bulb moment like the one I had with alternating yarns to find something to share. I can't expect people to pay their subscription if there's no new content. It doesn't make sense. But at the same time, I don't want to switch Patreon off. There's a wealth of information there that people are still using. People join there even though the, there's now a clear indication that says new content is not posted to this tier. If you come in here, you can stay as long as you want. You will pay as long as you want. But if you finish, you've got to leave. There's, there's not, nothing new coming. And that's been like that now for close to two years, I think. Yeah, I think. So this got me thinking. In the Slow Saturday podcasts like this one, I'm relatively restrained. I don't speak my thoughts as much as I did today. Uh, I don't show you the crazy side. I try to show you the normal side. No, I'm not schizophrenic. I went to a psychologist for that as well. I'm just autistic and weird. So on Patreon, I created a new tier. Living the slow life. If you join that, it's going to cost you $3 in a month. For the South Africans that don't know the exchange rate, in what world are you living? How can you send me an email and say to me, how much is $3? For goodness sake, woman. Have you ever heard of a currency converter? Never mind. You see, now that's the thoughts that I normally don't share in a slow Saturday. <laughs> and that's what you will get on Patreon. Okay, so three dollars is like it's about forty-five to fifty rand. It depends on the exchange rate. We're currently running at about fifteen to sixteen rand for a dollar. It's not much. Eighty money. Okay, so for the three dollars, I am going to because it's a new tier. You cannot see the content that I've shared on the old tiers. You you. And I don't want to go and edit hundreds of videos one by one because there's no bulk function, I asked, to suddenly be all available on the new tier. So what I'm going to do instead is each month as I can think of something relevant to what I'm doing, I'm going to look into the old content and release them to the new tier. So you will get um, a regular feed of tutorial stuff. I don't want to commit and say weekly. It's not that. It will come. Plus, I will talk more in uh, detail there about what I'm doing, 
why am I doing it? Why did I choose this yarn? What is irritating me about the yarn? What do I love about the yarn? Um, what problems did I run into with the design? Because that happens frequently. I don't think out a whole design before I start. I have the, the concept and I think that's how I want to do it and I jump in in the deep side. And the biggest problem that I have is that I cannot estimate how much yarn I will need. That is the biggest pain in my ass. I cannot tell you how bad. Like with this. I have problems estimating yarn usage. So that I will discuss. Things like what did the testers battle with? Why did they battle with it? And how are you going to fix it to prevent the normal crafter from battling with the same thing? And then obviously there, I will show you the crazy. All of it. So you have to wear bickle panties there. Uh, what you see is what you get and what you hear is what you hear. I'm not going to try to be well composed and well spoken and well behaved because it, it takes so much out of me to, to mask. Autistic people do two things. We stim. The moment that we're in a situation where we feel overwhelmed, we stim. We, and I will... If I stand in line at the grocery store, I hate going to the shops. I hate it. My husband does all the shopping. The moment I'm in a queue and there's people around me, I will fold my arms and I will start rocking side to side. I'm literally trying to, to just rock myself to a calmer place. Uh, we stem to survive. It's a coping mechanism. And then we mask, we try to fit in with what is around us and when, when I feel like I don't actually know how to behave, I will go very quiet and rather just shut up for the sake of peace because I don't know how many times I've offended people in my life. It just happens. So even on my slow Saturday videos, I really try to avoid situations like that because people in the world we live in, people think that they can say whatever they want to say on social media and then everybody must be okay with it. They can be horrible, they can be mean, they can be outspoken and everybody must just deal with it. And So I try to avoid that because I don't want people to think I'm like that. But I, I get my fair share of messages saying, why did you do that? You shouldn't sound like that. You shouldn't be doing that. Oh, whatever. So on the Patreon videos, you're going to get raw me in all its craziness. So if you can, okay, what else are you going to get? If I release that pattern onto Ravelry now, I am definitely going to give a coupon code um, exclusively to the patrons on Patreon where they can either get the item for free, the pattern for free on Ravelry or there will be a good uh, discount or there will be um, um, a buy one pattern, get another one for free, whatever. I don't know yet, but it will be worth it. I want to make your contribution of $3 a month really worth it. So I will try to repay it to you through a pattern on Ravelry. Which means that many times you won't have to buy the pattern. So the $3 you give me is just... There, it's very hard to make a living through patterns. When you release a pattern, you get good sales for a week and then it dies down. Can, Can I work fast enough to have a pattern every week on Ravelry to have a steady flow of income where I can actually budget? I can't. And that's where Patreon comes in. Patreon is so that I know so many dollars are there. I'm going to get it at the end of the month. I can budget for that. How much can I spend on yarn? 
because that's what it's all about for me it's how much do i have to spend on you because i can't sign you things without you so you've got to make money you've got to have money to make money yeah so if you can afford three dollars and if you are interested in this crazy autistic designer that's slightly off her rocket a few grabs short of a bunch and that curses profusely at times please join my patreon i will put the link for you in the comments okay now when i'm gonna make a video on this on patreon i'm gonna tell you how i calculated this morning exactly how much yarn i need to complete this that's the type of things that you will get on Patreon. It will, it will be very informative, I promise you. Okay, that is all from me for this slow Saturday. What am I going to do? Well, I'm waiting for yarn to finish the shawl, so I can't work on that. I think what I'm going to do first is to finish this, because I want to wear this. I like it. And I want to do the tutorial video on this as well today. So <clears throat> I might work on that today and release that over the weekend as well. And um, then I'm going to start on this one. On my little ombre cardigan. It's going to be a crochet project. It's going to be a measure and make project. Which means that it's fully size inclusive. You can do it for any... Uh, age or size from baby up to adult man it doesn't matter although I don't think the pattern will be nice to an adult man unless it's a cross dresser <laughs> I don't know it's a little bit more feminine um, but yeah it, it's a measure and make pattern and it's suitable to any size from baby right up to adult and I think I've said it all yeah I've said it all okay do you have three dollars in a month Please support me. Then I can carry on in my crazy designing journey. I'll see you next week.